You may have seen a video that I uploaded back in September 16 where I demonstrated this laser projector. Now this is something that's more designed for entertainment venues rather than the home, but when the projector is combined with a computer with the appropriate software on it, you can use it to display various animations as well as sound and light shows that are synchronised to the music. Now the music visualizers were all well and good, but at the time I made the video there was one thing that I hoped I'd be able to use a projector for at some point in the future. The images that this produces are very much like a vector display, like a Vectrex game console or the old Star Wars arcade game, those lovely bright sharp lines. I just thought it'd be great if somebody was able to make an emulator for either the Mac or a Windows PC that could output its images over this projector and you could play some of those old vector games on a massive screen on the wall. Well as it happens my wish from 2016 kind of came true because the company behind the laser projector software got in touch with me towards the end of 2017 to say they'd updated it to include some games. So earlier on this year I got the laser projector out of storage to try some of these for myself. Now a projector like the one I'm using here can be bought online for approximately £600 or $800. US dollars. I'll put a link in the video description to them on eBay if you're interested. Of course even though I'm playing games with this, laser projectors aren't toys and can irreparably damage eyesight so need to be treated with respect. However, as you'll see as this video progresses, this particular projector isn't really up to the task of displaying some of the more complicated games anyway. To mount the projector on my stand I've had to attach it upside down, but it's not a problem as the software allows the display to be flipped and mirrored. The software is running on my laptop which is connected to the projector by a USB cable and I'm controlling the games using the keyboard. I found it problematic capturing good quality video of the projected images, they were just far too bright. Now, I've done the best that I can, but it is a very long way away from being half decent, however it is what it is. These types of projectors work by shining a laser onto mirrors which then move very rapidly to manipulate the beam into drawing shapes. The physical speed at which those mirrors can be manipulated places a ceiling on the amount of lines that can be drawn at any one time. If you try and draw too much the laser won't have time to get around the whole image before the persistence of vision effect wears off and flicker is noticeable. Now if you want to see more on this subject as well as watching a demonstration of a better quality laser projector playing asteroids I very much recommend the stand up maths video on this subject from March 2017 and I'll put a link to that in the video description text box as well. But before you watch that hang around for a few minutes and just see how I get on with my lower end laser projector and my free software. Right, so this is the software I'm using. It's Laser OS 0.910. I'm running it on a Mac, and it's got various options in here to provide laser light shows for synchronization with music, as well as display clocks and uh, various animations and things. But I'm interested here in the game, so I'm going to go down some of the titles in this list, and we're going to start off with Laseroids. Now this game is a clone of Asteroids and it takes away the hyperspace option but it adds in power-ups and to get those power-ups you have to fly through a little icon that appears on the screen for a few seconds, quite often at the wrong side of the screen. And the power-ups that it gives you, as far as the ones I've seen, are a laser, which I've got at the moment, and uh, there's multiple shots, and a shield. Now when you've got one of those power-ups, you'll see a bar go across the bottom of the screen, they only stay there for a few seconds. There's the UFOs in here as well which shoot back at you. One thing I have noticed with it though, it does let you fire a few too many bullets, so it makes it a little bit easy in a way. You could just stay in the centre of the screen and fire away at everything. There's a power up, I'll see if I can get it. There you go, you see the bar across the bottom of the screen. Now there are a couple of issues with this one, one of which is caused by my projector. It doesn't look like it's doing too bad a job, the only thing that you notice is when the power up icon appears, which should look like an hourglass, it just looks like a, a strange shape, although you can still spot it on the screen because it's the only thing that isn't moving and it's a different colour to everything else. The other issues are pure gameplay ones. For example, I don't know how many lives I've got and whether or not that's even a factor in the game. There's no indicator on screen to do with that. Secondly, when you do lose a life, there's no explosion or sound effect. The ship just resets back to the centre of the screen. So it's sometimes a little bit hard to tell that you've actually lost a life if 
they do count the lives. And thirdly, when you get to end of levels or you shoot the UFO, the screen blanks for a second, which is just a little bit disconcerting. But overall, despite those issues, this is still very entertaining to play. You might not really have any great objective or worry about lives counting down, but the game mechanic of an inertia-based space shooter is still a lot of fun. But unfortunately I've found it's not possible to adequately capture the visuals to show you in this video. If you've ever seen a vector arcade game you'll know it's a lot more impressive in person than it would be on a video recording of it. And that's because we're dealing with very smooth images that glide across the screen. They don't really adhere to frames per second as such. And then on top of that this one has incredibly bright images which unfortunately when you shoot them with a camera translate to a kind of blurry mess there's a halo around each of these objects which you don't notice when you're playing them in person but somehow gets added during the encoding process anyway let's move on and have a look at some of the other games now i'm not showing all of them to you because quite a lot of them aren't really worth showing but this one's all right it's a clone of missile command Now, because this game has particularly sparse graphics, my projector has no problem moving around and drawing everything it needs to in the amount of time it's got. It's some of the later games where we have a little bit more problem. You can see it's doing okay on this one, because if you look at the cityscape at the bottom, those buildings have nice straight lines on them. On the games where it can't draw everything quick enough, you'll see those straight lines start to become curves. So the two games I've shown you so far are really the most complete ones, the Asteroids Clone and Missile Command. Moving on to some of the other titles, and they come across more as tech demos than anything else. Some of these are clones of other games, and then some are just little simple ideas that you can play for a few minutes, but you lose interest pretty quickly. Now the next game along is a Tempest clone, and I found this one particularly difficult to play, not least because of the fact that it doesn't have any sound on it. Now I am playing these games on an Apple Macintosh, which is connected up to the projector via USB. The same software is also available for Windows computers. So it's quite possible that a game like this on the Windows version would work differently. It might have sound with it, and perhaps there's even a different list of games. I haven't looked at that version of the software. Now moving on to the next one, it's a Breakout clone. This one's got sound on it, but it's quite tricky because, again, I'm using the keyboard through all these games, so there's no analog control, and you can't see where the walls are until something hits them. Moving on, version of Flappy Bird. Now this one's a little bit easier than the game on smartphones because as you notice those walls are further apart. But also notice how they're getting drawn. They're not particularly square now and this is part of the issue that we're having with this projector. Once it needs to draw straight lines and it has to draw too many of them, it starts to draw curves. This game could be fun as a two-player game, but it isn't a two-player game, it's just one player. So it's one person against the computer, the computer's particularly daft, so it's just a little bit too easy. It's something you can play for a couple of minutes and then that's it. Moving on to the next one, this is a shooter, up but it's very difficult. Um, it's incredibly hard and it's not made any easier by the fact that all the objects are now getting drawn as circles and you're just firing the different kinds of circles. This one looks quite impressive but using it with a keyboard is a little bit hard to move that point around to get it to where you want and again you see the alien ships are circles and look at these, these are supposed to be Klingon type ships and they're just being drawn by a squiggly line. I'll just let one get a little bit closer to the camera you can see uh, it's just one long squiggle. Now I want to show you what some of these games look like that I'm demonstrating now through the software. Now the software just plays them in a little tiny screen at the corner so I can't get you a full screen image but I'll zoom up on it a little bit and we can just have a look what these should have looked like. So there it is in the top left corner that's the game being played on the computer and if we look at that in a bit more detail, you can see what some of these games should have been like. So this should be nice straight lines and various cubes that I'm shooting. This one, the alien ships, are various geometric shapes. And as far as the enemy starships in that 
Star Trek clone, well, they're a little bit better realised. They're diamond shapes in the middle with the wings or the structure coming off that as a bit of an M shape, rather than just one long squiggle. And the tank game that I showed you last, nice straight lines on that one. And of course the tanks are square rather than circles. So unfortunately for most of those games, this projector isn't really up to the task. It can draw animations like this that are quite simple, but even some of these it struggles with. Just look at the ice cubes in these glasses here, and then we'll have a look at it on the computer screen, and that's what they should look like, cubes. Whereas if we go back to the animation as it was projected, everything's just drawn as curved lines. So a bit of a shame really, I thought this projector was a bit better than it was, but it was worth getting it out of the attic, plugging it in to try some of these games out. And if you want to try the software for yourself, even if you don't have a laser projector, you can download it from wickedlasers.com and it's currently free of charge. Right, so that's it. I've given it a go and had very mixed results, unfortunately, and that is down to my laser projector just not being up to the task. It just doesn't draw the images quickly enough, so it literally cuts corners, and quite often you'll end up with a blob versus a blob, and you're trying to avoid blobs rather than a spaceship versus another spaceship with missiles coming in. So it does take away from it a lot. I've got to say that Asteroids game, though, that was still quite enjoyable to play. It's got a few rough edges, but it was uh, good fun, and it's great to see vectors or whatever these things are on a screen this large it really is a bit of an unusual experience it's so bright as well uh, nothing else looks quite like this and it won't come across on the camera so if you do ever get the opportunity to play some laser vector type games and maybe someone's got a decent enough projector to render them properly definitely give it a go anyway that's it for the moment as always thanks for watching